tight security outside this special meeting of Fianna Fáil parliamentarians. Rarely, if ever, can the party have felt so politically besieged. In September, Fianna Fáil TDs met in Galway for the annual gathering of the parliamentary party. Okay, thank you very much. Brian Lenahan signals that the budget might cut more than €3 billion. Euro. Clearly, there is scope to increase that figure if they're so minded. The economic news was depressing, the political consequences grim. They were about to get much worse. I have a note to the bar, and next day I see a chain of drinks coming up the counter. They were all buying drinks for him. He decided to do two very good impersonations, and he is very good at that. He was entertaining journalists. And I said trouble. Welcome back to Galway. And we've just been joined by party leader Brian Cowan. Tisha, good morning. Good morning. And thanks for coming over before your breakfast. I remember listening to it and saying to myself, I wouldn't do that if I were you. The allocations that would be made will require the implementation the good fight of the uh, sorry, the pro party agreement. It's become a custom to interview party leaders when these think-ins or autumn gatherings take place. And if it is in a hotel somewhere, to go to the hotel and to do it at breakfast time. We were in the restaurant having our breakfast when he came in and he said to the waitress, I, uh, would you give us a cup of tea? He said urgently. He had, had no cup of tea even, not an owner rasher down his neck. He had nothing to eat. Oh, and of course, she said, and went off and got it from, and he just swallowed it and went out. The minimum of what we're talking about is three billion euros. But he's, he's, he's setting out very clearly the, the seriousness of our intent. I didn't think it was a particularly good interview or revealing interview, but there it was. And then I started getting texts from people saying, my goodness, what was going on? This is a man that's supposed to be leading up and lead definitely with clearing his words. I'm embarrassed, but the people are not taking this job seriously. It's not good enough. Every phone in the room was hopping. There were texts coming from people everywhere. So eventually I actually got up and I got some of the party officials and I said, we have to do something about this. I remember a procession of ministers coming out and offering, frankly, ludicrous excuses for Tisha. He was fine. He was a bit hoarse. He was a bit tired. No difficulty with the interview at all. Of course, Tisha was very hoarse during the interview. That was very self-evident and very clear. But it seems to me that that's what the issue now seems to be about, that the teacher was hoarse. Certainly by uh, drive time, I realised that this was wrong tack here. We better change tack. These TDs and senators were urged not to be distracted by the media focus on Brian Cowan's radio interview. Of course, he shouldn't have done it. I don't know who was in charge of him, in inverted commas. People said to me, why didn't Brian Cowan pretend he had a sore throat next morning or a headache and not do the program? This is Brian Cowan for you. It's a matter of going out and doing it as he is and as he was and be judged on that. The big question people asked me often, still do sometimes, uh, about that interview, was he drunk? To which the answer is, I have never sat down to interview anybody uh, knowing or thinking that they were drunk. No exceptions. Sorry, we're late for the conference. Thanks very much. I accompanied the T-shirt with other members of the party down to the press conference. There was at least 50 or 60 journalists there, and I can say to you, you wouldn't survive the Irish press corps hung over. I think it's a real new law in Irish politics. Yeah. Obviously, politically motivated and orchestrated. I think it's pathetic and pitiful, but look, I'm here to do business. We have a job to do. You know, from a personal point of view, I think it was very upsetting for him. I would have travelled up the buses with my link the following, the following day. Um, and, uh, you know, he really was annoyed with himself. I intend doing more early morning radio interviews. <laughs> Brian Cowan was now in dangerous territory. His ministers were embarrassed defending the indefensible. Like Bertie Hearn before him, Cowan was becoming a liability. I would like to make it very clear that there was no intention on my part whatever of any disrespect to the country or to the people of Ireland. Has this not damaged your standing as Taoiseach within your, within, with your peers? Well, I hope not. I, mean, I, I don't believe he should have resigned then because to him it would have been saying, um, I was wrong, I was drunk, I was hungover, I was whatever, so therefore I shouldn't be Taoiseach of this country when he was none of the above. Later on there were other much bigger, more fundamental issues for the country that I suppose, caused people to question us as a government and him as a leader. But that wasn't the day for him to resign.